Because I want to see my dreams come true, I shine brighter than the moon in the nights with proof to back up my words. Cause lies always disguise themselves to sheep when around the wolves and the herd, you heard. So my you need me at the finish line. has to be your addiction. They pin me from arm to arm and plan my crucifixion. But I am the man of eternal light. They can cause me no affliction. Traveling through time and space with grace beyond man's jurisdiction. With the letters L-I-O-N on my throat is an inscription. So if any... Stop now, smoke the push, and when you can't breathe, and got a ghostly look, and when your heart stops beating, God speed, pray to your God and not your demons. See, every man has his kryptonite on any given corner, it's a given sight. You got to He said, Boy, where are you running with that busted old red car? There's no one in front or behind you Why have you come so far? He and his wife turned their property into a theme park for peace and love and stuff. And stuff. When in Arizona, visit the So High theme park because what Michael Weiser is coming to us from So High, Arizona. Thank you, asshole. Alright, so everyone welcome Michael to the mic. See if we can pick up some power. So I'm tough got it going like I'm throwing full throttle, just hitting it harder than a wine who hit his bottle. Sometimes I got it flying like I'm trying, no doubt, just to shout out the troubles we're all mumbling about, like that a half a million greed, or a hundred million need, another billion bleed full speed from the deed. So I'm firing off the uses we all wish that they would change. I'm shooting off my bullets from a point blank range, and my words be traveling like vocal javelins, poking at the vicious till their minds are going rattling. I'm chopping at the chains, keep the trust tight, cause I was born a rhyme, and I'm built to fight you some freedom fighter cause I seen the light yeah wanna take it high that's why I became a writer and I never met a battle I wouldn't take on go long stay strong get the throng sing along never met a battle that'll make me turn away I sing my song I write and wrong and change the world someday though some time will overcome it numb it to my tummy watching wicked rule the world while we stand around like dummies and time seems so hopeless push is ruling dope is a whole for overthrow is bottom down cause I know this yeah, yeah. What do I really have to tell you what you Whoa. really should have guessed? That none of us are free as long as some with the oppressed you wait for someone else to change it, then we'll never get it done. For as long as we're divided, we will never stand as one. And some may claim my aim is just the same as talk and talk, but for me, stays a step, it's a stumble in my walk. Sometimes I gotta fly like I'm trying, no doubt, just to handle my candle and I'll burn it till it's out. Yeah. Earlier, Lolly was talking about how tonight is 9-11. Yeah. Eight yeah. years ago, that was a hell of a day. Yeah, I was looking through my poetry trying to think, what do I have to honor that day? And I realized I didn't have anything I liked as much of my own as a poem by Christopher Fox Graham out of Sedona. So I asked his permission, and I'm performing this tonight. If you were watching the TV that morning, you may recall before the towers fell, they were showing... Uh, the people standing on the ledges, and sometimes the people falling. This poem's about that. It's called They Held Hands. On a commonplace Tuesday morning, not unlike that Sunday morning 60 years before, destined for infamy, they held hands as they fell. It was a working Tuesday. Just a date on a calendar, a morning, like the morning before. But now they found themselves standing on a windowsill, 92nd floor, overlooking the city, and they felt so weightless. 
They were not thinking about the cause and effect history that would be written in textbooks or the CNN sound bites. They weren't debating the geopolitical ramifications that led up to that morning. He had had a decaf. She, a bear claw, and an espresso. They had been talking about Will and Grace when jets impregnated the building with infernos. And now the fire was burning, the smoke was rising, and it was getting hard to breathe. Even after they smashed the window out, the inferno was swelling, it had reached their floor, and the stairwell was gone. Their options were now to burn or to fall. And now, they say that when the human animal realizes that death is inevitable, psychologists tell us that we want some control over those final moments and that choosing suicide is the healthy reaction over accepting surrender. We, we choose to accept the annihilation rather than let it choose us. So on one side was this unbearable heat, the roaring flames, acrid smoke, the screams of the suffering, and on the other side, fresh air. They say suicide is the final act of free will, that it, it keeps consciousness intact even as it's being destroyed. But they were not thinking about psychology. They were not thinking about terrorism, debating responsibility, retaliation, wars, flags, patriot acts. That could wait till September 12th. That morning belonged to them because they didn't have a tomorrow. And the true terror of that morning comes in imagining what they were thinking as they decided whether to burn or to fall. Now, imagine having that conversation with the person sitting next to you. The barricaded the doors on fire, the extinguishers empty, blinded by smoke, out on the windowsill, 92nd floor. We wait until flames lick our clothes before we lean forward and choose the moment to fall. Others who fell were scrambling, some were screaming, some were on fire, but we held hands as we fell. Now, they say that survivors of extreme falls experience it in slow motion and that it's almost mystical. And I don't know if they felt mystical, but I do know that it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8.54 seconds to fall, 1,144 feet. And that that's enough time to say a prayer, or regret a memory, or ask forgiveness to say goodbye, or it's enough time to wonder how the sky could be so blue in such a beautiful morning. God pour blessings on this house You're infecting the world, but God bless you One false move and God damn you She was already a song Joy planted like musical no tongue in her place. They crafted her a melody that would bring tears to your eyes. She was already a poem. Her story laid out, waiting to be told, pregnant in the minds of those who loved and adored her. She represented a promise.